Did you ever wonder where is Barca from? And how did he come to the Ludis of Baleares? We only got a sneak peek of his story from Varro, but we want to know everything. And as Asho would say... Failed. <laughs> <laughs> the Beast of Carthage. You know, I've always wondered how you acquired the name. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. There's a comic called Devil's Due Spartacus, and I've actually read through the whole comic. And it tells really interesting things, from animes to Barca and a few others. Barca's story in particular was very interesting to me, and is today's focus, so let's get through it. The story follows Barca before his life as a gladiator and the events that led to him becoming the Beast of Carthage. Young frail Barca cannot save his mother or his village from Roman marauders, and his father Mago bitterly disowns Barca, but that vengeful day eventually creates Barca, the beast of Carthage, a towering man of muscle and hate. In Roman hands, Barca must survive the gladiator's arena long enough to get the bloody satisfaction he craves. Barca, a carefree young boy who spends his time playing with his best friend, Cyprian, and the two enjoy playing with birds. The two hail from a fierce warrior village as Mago, the chieftain, and Barca's father tells them to stop, as he told his wife Elisa that their son Barca was becoming weak by playing, not a strong warrior like he should grow up to. Elisa told him that they are being children and should play whenever they want it, as Mago is bitter at this choice as Elisa consoles her son, telling him to enjoy having fun. Barca also had a grandfather named Hasdrubal, who was called the General of Death. His father, Mago, was known for his strength and expertise in the battlefield. Barca's village is a fierce warrior village, and every man must swear an oath once the proper age is reached, which Barca had as well. The village is in a region near Carthage, yet the exact name of Barca's village is unknown. His father despised Barca because he was not as he wished him to be, a warrior, only thinking about the battlefield and about fighting. Mago told Barca and Elisa that once he returns to the village from a raid, Barca will have sworn the oath and be ready, which was much to the disliking of Barca. Yet the return of Mago, Barca's father, proved to be too late. Mago and most of whom protected the village left to wage a war, which left the village of Barca unprotected against any invasions. On one such day, the Romans invaded and everything turned into red, blood. Only few of whom could protect the village remained back, but they were too few to do anything. Elisa told Barca and Cyprian to hide in the closet while she confronted a soldier that broke in their home. Barca was forced to watch as his mother was being beheaded by the soldier, causing him to fall into a depression where he would stay by his late mother's side for many days until his father and the man of his village returned. Returning to his house, Mago found his son crying over his wife's corpse. Sad and angered, Mago blamed his son's cowardice for his wife's death and disowned him. Barca, now out of home and family, decided there was only one thing he could do, which was to train for many years. Barca became a formidable warrior throughout the years during this time. Barca and his group of assembled men had fought and defeated several many Roman legions. Barca had then remembered the words of his father and remembered his heritage, that he is a fierce warrior, and that awoke the beast in him, which slumbered in Barca for so long, the beast of Carthage, already in Barca's younger days. At some point during this time, Barca and Cyprian, his best friend, had become lovers and had marched their men towards Rome before they crossed a steep river. Barca had his men fill the water with the bodies of a group of Gauls they had defeated beforehand. The Gauls proved themselves useful, quoted Barca on his victory. One night, while Barca and his men were gathered around a fire, a group of Romans attacked them. Barca and his men fought with all they had, but the Phoenicians were simply no match for the Romans who either killed or captured them. In the fray, Cyprian, Barca's lover, was killed while trying to protect Barca who called out to him before he died. Cyprian told Barca, remember me, 
This angered Barca who attacked the soldiers with full might, but despite his best efforts, he was defeated and captured along with his surviving men. Barca's thirst for blood had first began in Spain before moving on to Gaul. The beast of Carthage was tamed for the moment being. Rage consumed Barca for what happened to his best friend and his men. The Phoenicians were then taken to Capua before they were forced to fight each other in the arena. Barca was able to defend himself and take down many of his own people and was one of the two remaining warriors on the sands as he turned to face his opponent and came across a shocking sight which was his father Mago who was also in the arena. Father and son were shocked to see each other and knowing there was no way, the two began to fight each other. And as they did, one of the watching nobles said, I would purchase the winner. The watching noble was Boreares. This event was similar to Theocles Battle Royale in which 100 men fought. Same is happening here, 100 of Barca's people forced to fight for the amusement of the Romans. On the sands, Mago and Barca battled. And the both possessed an advantage, for Mago it was strength and years of expertise in combat. For Barca it was strength and youth. They fought for half a day but eventually Barca gained the upper hand over Mago and was able to bring him to his knees. As he was on his knees, Mago looked up to Barca and in an admiring tone stated, Barca you are my son. Barca told him, and I live virile father. He then stabbed Mago through the throat after some hesitation. Barca also told his father, I live the oath father, before finishing the battle royale. Barca was declared victor and from then on known as the Beast of Carthage. This is basically the history of Barca, the Beast of Carthage. Barca's story is quite tragic to be honest and I wish his end would have been different than being tricked by Asher. He was despised by his father in his youth slaughtered the Romans as revenge for his mother and lost his loving ones, one after another, was forced to fight in the arena against his own people and against his own father for the amusement of the Romans, but he gained trust and the acknowledgement of his father at the end. The end in War of the Damned for the funeral of Crixus whom was also Barca's best friend aside Octus. A gladiator shouted the name of Barca as a proper honoring to the beast of Carthage. And that was a proper ending which Barca deserved, a proper last honorment in the end of War of the Dead. We don't know who the gladiator was who shouted the name Barca, but I found it quite good that the writers implemented this to honor Barca one last time, the beast of Carthage.